Hi, my name is Kelvin Boateng, and I'm a Flutter Product Marketing Manager. We had some big news at this year's Google I.O., so I'm going to recap everything you need to know in under five minutes. Start the clock. First up, let's talk about six packs. No, not those. Or those either. Jeez, guys. There goes seven seconds. We launched Flutter with a vision to enable developers to paint pixels on any screen from a single code base. Flutter 1 supported two key platforms, iOS and Android, but we had a long way to go. So Google I.O. this year was a bit of a full circle moment for Flutter. Just three years after that initial launch, we released Flutter 3, which includes support for Mac OS and Linux apps built on Flutter, letting you create high quality, beautiful experiences on six different platforms, all from a single code base. There's little time to get sentimental though. Flutter 3 is packed with exciting updates, so we better get going. Let's start with desktop and Mac OS more specifically. You can now build apps with that Mac OS look and feel, like Superlist, along with the ability to sign your executables so users don't get awkward warnings about untrusted publishers. Because come on, you're trustworthy. There are now also two versions of the Flutter SDK for Mac OS one for Apple Silicon and one for Intel processors, enabling developers and users alike to run Flutter natively regardless of their system's architecture. If you're interested in learning more about Flutter on the desktop, check out Craig and Greg's talk, along with Justin's workshop on writing a Flutter desktop application. On the web, we've added new APIs to give you more control over your app's initialization. We've also taken advantage of some of the latest web standards to improve on things like image decoding and scrolling performance. If you want more in-depth coverage of Flutter on the web, check out Kevin's talk. Also, if you're interested not only in Flutter on the web, but also the web in Flutter, check out Andrew's workshop on adding a web view to your mobile app. Now we're cooking with gas. That gets us to mobile, where we've added support for Material 3 widgets, re-architected platform views on Android to improve native inline ads, and worked with Microsoft to introduce support for foldable phones. Whew, that was a lot of updates. You'd be forgiven for thinking we're surely near the end, but we're just getting started. Flutter 3 also adds new performance-focused features to the Flutter DevTools. You can now capture your Flutter build, layout, and paint events with DevTools. You can also now turn off certain rendering types like clipping, opacity, and shapes to really get to the bottom of any rendering issues that may be affecting your app's performance. You could find this on the performance panel in the Flutter DevTools. We know a lot of you use Firebase, and we've worked with the Firebase team to make Flutter and Firebase work even better together, including Crashlytics support for Flutter apps. It's such a big deal. Our friends at Firebase made an entire talk you can watch to learn more. We also announced Dart 2.17, featuring a host of new features and performance improvements. One of the most exciting improvements is with enums, which now support almost everything you can do with a regular class. If you're interested in concurrency and parallelism in Dart, check out Michael T and Michael G's talk on when, why, and how to multi-thread. Now, if you've ever thought to yourself, hmm, Flutter seems cool, but I'm not sure how it would perform in this app I've already published. I've got some good news for you. We announced a new project called Put Flutter to Work, where we provide a realistic example of how Flutter can save development cycles and make it as easy as humanly possible to try Flutter in your own apps. This is a sample application and demo rolled into one, and you can find it on GitHub. Within the repo, you'll find a Flutter module for capturing user sentiment in three native newsfeed apps, one each for the web, Android, and iOS. Our hope is that you can take the code right from the repo and drop it into your own app to see how Flutter might work in your own stuff. The code can be found at flutter.dev slash go slash try. So what have we got now? Five things? That'd be a real nice and round number to end on, wouldn't it? <laughs> We've noticed that lots of game developers have been using Flutter to build casual games. Think word puzzles, slide puzzles, etc. So we've put together something we think will help to make the game building process easier. The Flutter Casual Games Toolkit is a starter pack to help you get your mobile casual game from idea to launch. The toolkit includes a sample app, community spaces, information on credits from Google Ads and Cloud, and more learning materials. All of this can be accessed at flutter.dev slash games. Now I think that's everything, except, well, you. Over the last several months, the Flutter community has been nothing short of incredible. We saw you push your creativity to the limits in the puzzle hack, 
jump to submit the apps you've been working so hard on to showcase when we announced Flutter on Windows, and we've recently had the pleasure of seeing you all meet up in person in gatherings all over the world through Flutter festivals. We really do think we've got the best community out there and can't thank you enough for the energy you bring to your work. If you're interested in learning more about anything I mentioned, watch what's new in Flutter or head to flutter.dev slash events slash IO dash 22 to see all that we announced and hear more from members of the team. Till next time.